A local artist has been on a challenging personal journey doing the work he loves even as he loses his eyesight. We first met John Strand six years ago when he was diagnosed with glaucoma. Right now he's preparing for a pretty extraordinary show. Paula Tutman is at the gallery at Wayne State and Paula help us understand how he's been able to meet this challenge. Well, he actually believes that this is making him a better artist, and perhaps it's the micro-focus, knowing what's eventually coming down the pike. I, I just want to give you a sense of his artwork and the incredible detail. And, and Jason, what makes this so incredible is when you look at the scale, the size of some of his paintings, and how he actually gets there. The artwork of John Strand seems to be an explosion of light and vision. But look closer, not just at the art, but the artist. What you're seeing is actually the very absence of light and vision. John Strand is creating light, in waning light, and failing vision. When we met John in 2012, he had just been diagnosed with glaucoma. I hadn't been to my eye doctor maybe about three years. You know, the artist's life and everything. And he was examining me, and all of a sudden he just said, oh, no, this is not good. He doesn't have a good bedside manner. And it was just fight the fight. That's what we're, re we're doing right now. Since then, he has been in a breakneck race against time and encroaching darkness with blind ambition. Six years later, today, he is completely blind in his left eye and developing a cataract in his right eye. Realizing that as long as I can see, as long as I still have my gift, I have to keep doing what I'm doing. His pointillism style means there are no broad strokes, no shortcuts. Every piece, big and small, is a collection of tiny pen dots. Some of these pieces take as many as 1,800 hours of painstaking work. I do the second layer upside down, then I do the third layer this way, then I turn the piece around and do the fourth layer this way, then I do the fifth layer this way, then I do the sixth layer this way. That's how I achieve the depth of color. I would put this in a group and then these two alone. And so it is incredible that he has a show that opens at Wayne State University's Art Gallery Friday. Don't you think these should be off a little bit? Maybe not all like symmetrical? Most everything you'll see has been done in spite of the approaching darkness and because of it. Because when the lights go out, you know, what's going to happen then? I don't like to think about that. Oracles, temples, and waves, and a dragon called Raoul is being carefully hung. And for the next 21 days, we'll show that spirit is a work of art. I consider myself the, one of the luckiest people on earth because I've been allowed to do this my whole life. That's not a bad deal. So as you can see, they're getting ready for the opening reception tomorrow at 5 o'clock. It's the art gallery on the campus of Wayne State University. By the way, if you don't know where that is, it's actually within walking distance of the DIA. It's just west of the DIA on campus. But Jason, I just want to draw your attention to this. I was looking at this painting, and this is Raul the dragon, and I was going, oh my gosh, look at the detail in that palm tree. And John said, no, Paula, that's the tail of the dragon. And in fact, you can find the tail of the dragon in many of the paintings, kind of like a little Where's Waldo search if you decide to come out. I'll put information on all of our social media platforms so that you can find the gallery and the opening. That would be fantastic because if people haven't fallen in love with pointillism, it's truly an amazing way to paint. And like he said, he may be lucky, but we're the lucky ones. Paula, great story.